time for parenting, and today we are joined by Femi Shofolue, who is a thoroughbred passionate youth teacher with more than a decade hands-on experience in teens and youth counseling. Uh, today, the conversation is focused on raising your girl child uh, for global relevance. Thank you so much for being here today, Thank you Femi. for having me again. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, Femi, when we talk about um, global relevance, it, it does encompass so many aspects. And then looking at the girl child in, ref in reference to global relevance, well, what's that about? Well, uh, when we talk about global relevance, <clears throat> sorry, we mean that uh, your child can fit in into any space in any nation of the world. And get child in particular because if you check African culture and especially Nigeria, the girl child has been relegated over the years such that their global perspective may have been thwarted in a way. Boys kind of always have their way at home, and that has its own way of getting people ready for global relevance. Girls are probably told to obey, uh, listen to instructions, stay where I put you, and all these don't align with becoming globally relevant. So how then do you teach your girl child to be globally relevant? Yeah, first, uh, as a girl child, you have to give them global perspective on matters. Uh, let them know the differences in religion, but one is not really superior to the other. It will shock you that uh, outside, the, outside our country, Nigeria, there are places you will enter and your religion may not even be a thing there at all. And if you have been told that your religion is the most important, you enter such area, you look like a nuisance. Mm -hmm. You will even be relevant in such space. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about uh, gender equality. We are still fighting it in Nigeria as it is, trying to create the balance. But the world has moved on with this. They have accepted this and become a norm. There is no longer a role for a male and a female in the global, past, I mean, global stage. People take up whatever responsibility that is passed on to them or they they are in for, and they just do it without being gender biased or thinking about uh, you are not qualified, you are a male, you are a female, it doesn't matter. So they, they must have this broad perspective to matters. Okay, so how then, okay, so we, we've talked about how we can, you know, how, why, why it's important for them to do so. Yeah. But I need you to actually teach us how. What yeah. are the things you need to tell your child? What are the things you need to teach your child? Number one, teach them to speak up for themselves. It is very important. Uh, in the global stage, there is no limitation to what or how you can hear your view. And uh, people tend to accept your view, critically look into it, check how it fits into the larger picture, without even thinking about your gender. If it's going to work, it is accepted. Why they can push that of 10,000 men you know, or boys away? if your own is relevant. So you need to teach them to speak for themselves. And how do you do this? Let them start making decisions at home. When they make decisions, guide their decisions. If it is right, let it be executed. Let them enjoy the reward of their decisions. If you are doing this, you are actually preparing them to be bold enough to come out and speak their mind anywhere they are in the world. And this is also very important. Then too, I think you need to teach them leadership. Get them leadership, you know, coach, if necessary, because the whole world today, everybody is a leader in something. You don't need to lead a people to be a leader. You can be a leader of your own idea. And every gay child needs to be taught that they should be the leader of their idea, and their idea should be heard. They should, you know, speak their mind anywhere, anytime that is required. Hmm. Now, before we began this conversation off air, you were telling me a story of something that Yes. Happened. Uh, talking about globally, you know, relevant, uh, two of my friends, actually, a couple, they relocated to UK, and uh, the lady was the one that got the, you know, visa to study abroad, okay. and uh, the husband went with her as a dependent. And you know this African culture of cooking for your husband, and it, it's good, yeah, but, yeah, caring for your family, it's good, but you see, if you, you must understand that the world has moved on, things are changing rapidly. So they were in a group discussion in class, and this lady was telling the, you know, his, her classmate that uh, she need to get off the discussion right now because she need to cook for her husband. Mm -hmm. And people there, begin, I mean, from all over the world, India, Pakistan, all over the world, students from everywhere, 
they were asking, is your husband handicapped? They said, she said, no. Why can't, she, why can't he cook for himself? You came here to study, obviously. He came as a dependent, not, in fact, he's a dependent as it, as it is. He should be able to cater for himself while you face your study. To cut the long story short, they actually thought she's been tortured and they called police on, on the husband. The husband had to go to police station to do some undertaking that the wife would be allowed to do a cause that she came to do Why the guy go and fend for himself. Now, this sounds funny. In Africa, it may look awkward, but that is the global stage right now. If you are not surprised because I know cook for yourself in, in, in you know the countries you mentioned Asia yeah countries <laughs> we have series of you know cases where women are expected to do certain things especially in the home so I, I find this really interesting because it, it shows that uh, when people are in a particular set, settings things change the it rules has to. change now when we talk about particular setting that setting is now global if we are not practicing it in Nigeria, that doesn't mean it is not being practiced all over the world. 80% or 90% of the world have eradicated this gender bias. There is gender equality now. If you need to cook, you go to the kitchen and cook. It doesn't matter whether you are the husband or the wife or the child. And then stop taking your girl child to the kitchen while the boy child is just there doing nothing. Both of them have to be in the kitchen when you need to cook. That is how I learned to cook, right? And I'm proud to say my jollof rice is the best at home. <laughs> I agree, please, so. I'm sure your wife does not agree. She does. <laughs> she does. <laughs> I believe I'm so. Good for you then. <laughs> okay, so now you have, a, you, you have a daughter. And so looking into the future, what would you expect of her, especially when she goes into the global scene? I, I expect her to, if I have a girl child, which I really don't do right now. But I have a lot of guys that I tutor and monitor and coach. Mm -hmm. And one of my joy is for them to go to the global world there and cause a change and represent Nigeria well. Mm -hmm. Unlike the example I just gave, they began to ask, where did these people come from? Are they coming from one bush? Are they coming from one hole? <laughs> I have a lot of students all over the world now who are making their parents proud from Nigeria. In fact, I have some students that were sent abroad recently, and I mean, they are students, immediately they got there, they were able to work, and because they are trained well, because we should not throw away all our culture. There is a way our culture to help but mold a good life. But we must know how to adapt to the certain, you know, Thank environment you we find ourselves. Thank you so in. much for your time, Femi Thank you so much It's for been an again. interesting conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you.